Welcome to a video presentation of Chapter 5, Section 3 and Chapter 5, Section 4 in McDougal and Tell's 8th grade textbook entitled Multiplying and Dividing Fractions. Start with two, def uh, two not really definitions, but scenarios that you'll encounter today. First one is about multiplying and how you multiply fractions. The product of two or more fractions is equal to the product of the numerators divided by the product of the denominators. The product of two or more fractions is equal to the product of the numerators divided by the product of the denominators. Okay. So the nice thing about multiplying is you don't have to do any of that common denominator stuff. Just multiply the top numbers, the numerators, multiply the bottom numbers, the denominators, and you're good to go. Divide. To divide two fractions, multiply the former by the reciprocal of the latter, L-A-T-T-E-R. To divide two fractions, multiply the former by the reciprocal of the latter, L-A-T-T-E-R. Okay. In case you're confused on that wording, former simply means the first. You could use that if you were listing objects, and I would say the former in the list. That would just mean the first thing. Okay. And the latter, L-A-T-T-E-R, means the second fraction, or in most cases, the last thing on the list. To divide two fractions, multiply the former by the reciprocal of the latter. All right, you can see at the top of the board we've got the sign rules for you. That should be something you're pretty much already familiar with, but I put it up there again just in case you've forgotten. If the problem together has an odd number of negative signs, the result will be negative. If the problem together has an even number of negatives, the result will be positive. All right, so let's go into the examples here. You can see the first four are multiplying, the last three are dividing. Example one, we've got negative two-fifths times negative two-thirds. Now, remember, multiplication problem, you can just go straight into multiplying. There's nothing fancy we have to do. So I can do two times two, which is four. Five times three, which is 15. And as you can see, we have two negative signs in the problem. Well, that's an even number, and if there's an even number of negatives, the result is positive. So we've got our answer. All right. Negative 3 tenths times 5 sixths. Now, you've got an option here. This one is something when you multiply, you can reduce. So you could multiply first, or you could multiply second after you've gotten the answer. I'm going to reduce, reduce after you got the answer. I'm going to reduce after I get my answer here. So on the top, I've got 3 times 5, which is 15. On the bottom, I've got 10 times 6, which is 60. I have one negative sign in the problem. By rule, that's an odd number, so the negative result is where I'm going with this one. 15 and 60. You want to reduce. Remember to reduce, you find the greatest common factor and then divide out the greatest common factor. So with 15 and 60, the greatest common factor is 15. How do I know that? Well, the factors of 15 are 1 and 15, 3 and 5. Of 60, 1 and 60, 2 and 33, it's 20, 4 and 15, 5 and 12, 6 and 10. The largest number that appeared on both lists was 15. I divide the top and the bottom by 15. And that will give me negative 1 fourth. What? I'd like you to. Alright, 5 and 1 half times 3 and 3 fourths. Unlike the addition and subtraction problems we did last week where we could get away with a few shenanigans and not necessarily have to convert, we don't have that luxury. 
when we have mixed numbers. So if we have mixed numbers, we're going to have to change them to improper fractions. Remember to do that, you take the denominator times the whole number part and add the numerator and it stays over the denominator. So 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11, it stays over 2. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 3 is 15, it stays over 4 times sign between. Now we can go straight into multiplying. 11 times 15 is 165. 2 times 4 is 8. And that is irreducible, so you could leave it 165.